And now for something completely different. Forget everything you've been told by others before. Get ready for the real deal. The full story presented by RIA Advisors. And welcome to the show this morning. This morning, uh, let me start that over. Well, welcome to the show this morning. It's Wednesday, hump day. All your end of the quarter rebalancing is beginning to take place today and tomorrow. So expect a little bit of volatility. Uh, we saw a little bit of a sell-off yesterday, uh, potentially, as we're starting to see that kind of end of the quarter. Um, also, of course, after we get back from the Easter break, we'll be kicking off Guess what? Yep, that's right. Quarter one earnings season begins in earnest. And so we'll start getting all the earnings reports coming in uh, starting about the second week of April. So again, right around the corner, back into millennial earnings season. And uh, of course, you know, we've been cutting those estimates. So again, high beat rates, it's all going to be fine. Nothing to worry about here. So uh, that's just kind of what to expect. Again, economic reports continue to come in mixed on the manufacturing side, continues to be very weak. We saw Philly Fed regional, uh, and the Richmond Fed Index, Dallas Fed, all very, very weak. Uh, still suggest economic problems uh, from that standpoint. But then on the service side of the index, uh, service side of the measures, of course, those are still doing just fine. Consumers hanging in there very well. Uh, consumers, the uh, latest consumer sentiment index out yesterday showed a bit of a decline uh, in overall sentiment, but the sentiment for consumers regarding stocks is pushing all-time highs. Uh, so again, consumers are very, very optimistic about the stock market, not so much about other stuff, but about the stock market, very, very optimistic. Uh, outlook for the economy is not as strong, and we're particularly seeing weakness in the younger bracket of the consumer sentiment survey. So in other words, the, the individuals between the ages of 25 and 34, they're not nearly as optimistic on what's going on as the older crowd. Um, so again, once you get to, to be elderly, you've got money, uh, things are much more optimistic. But again, overall, the sentiment index continues to hang in there. So again, just no real economic risk to speak of. You know, on this front, economic data continues to kind of come in as expected. Um, if we take a look at economists, they're ratcheting up their GDP expectations for this year. We're up to 2.1% growth for the entire year. So again, no recession in sight, really pretty much anywhere you look. So again, absolutely doesn't seem to be absolutely anything to worry about. And at the same time, this market just kind of continues to just kind of climb this, you know, this wall, so to speak, just kind of escalate every day. Uh, with no real, no real risk uh, at this point. Again, uh, if we take a look at the volatility index, we've talked about that before. But again, the expectations for a crash or a pullback in the market are extremely low. There's just simply no risk at this juncture. So again, um, as we kind of go forward, the markets are really just still continued to focus on what's going to be happening with the Fed. Are they going to cut rates or not? It's just that same story kind of over and over again because there's not much else for the markets to lean on at this moment. Again, economic data is fine. There's really nothing uh, of stress that is worrying the market to any, any degree. So again, markets just kind of pushing higher at this point as this flow of money continues to come in. Now, one of the interesting things continues to be is that bank reserves have been rising really ever since last October. So, one, uh, sorry, October of 2022. So remember in 2022, the market declined. And as we were declining in 2022 and going through that, that corrective phase from the peak of 2020, you know, we got down here to the bottom. Well, bank reserves declined during that period. So as bank reserves were declining, so were the markets. Those bank reserves bottomed in October of 2022 and have been rising ever since. And so again, as those bank reserves have been increasing, so have the markets because it, it finds its way into the financial markets. Now, the question becomes right now is this, reserve, this reverse repo facility, which is going to, to end. And that's going to be, this has been one of the big conversations with the Fed and why they're talking about cutting rates and reversing QT is because that reverse repo is being drained. So once that is drained, the expectations are is that reserves will begin to, to reverse. And if reserves reverse, potentially we start to see some drag on the overall market because of that reversal of that liquidity from those bank reserves. We'll see what happens, but this is why the Fed's been talking about cutting rates 
and reversing QT at this point to make sure there's liquidity and keep those bank reserves somewhat elevated. And again, that'll continue to support markets. We'll see what happens, but that's one of the things that we'll be looking at more, much more closely over the next few months as that reverse repo facility gets closer to being drained. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the markets, what you need to know before the bell this morning. So again, as I said, the uh, we're coming up to the end of the month. Of course, that's quarterly rebalancing. And again, this market's done nothing um, out of the ordinary. We've stayed well confined to this trend channel that we've talked about now repeatedly for the last few weeks. Again, markets sold off for the last three days. Futures are pointing a little bit higher this morning. So we're going to see a little bit of a bounce back up towards the top of this trend channel. So Again, we get back to the top of that trend channel around 5,200 or so. That's going to be, you know, kind of the setting new highs, of course, as we continue to kind of make this elevated run. But again, you know, the one thing to keep a watch on and the one thing we keep kind of watching importantly here is the angle of this ascent that we're seeing in the markets is continuing to be very, very steep. This is a very sharp angle of ascent that is, is going on with the market. So again, it's not unusual for markets to climb. And again, that's okay, but this is a very, very sharp angle, which is, is, is a little bit hard to continue to support drifting asset prices in the overall market at this degree, right? So it's just this, this, very, this very accelerated increase. We've seen these before, they don't last long. And when they do have this type of ascent, Again, like here, we had a, a very similar kind of advance, not nearly as long, but that is more of a sign of exhaustion at some point when you get there again, because you get all the buyers into the market. Everybody that wants to buy stocks have bought stocks. Again, you have this rush of investors to come in at this point. Again, this is why we're seeing, you know, basically every asset class go up, Bitcoin, gold, um, you know, stock prices, you name it, it's all going up at the same time. And at the same time, you have this very sharp increase in buyers trying to rush into the financial markets. There's no risk for the downside, at least that's what's perceived. So again, volatility is very low. That doesn't, that doesn't last forever. It can last a lot longer than you think. And this has been a very, very long stretch at this point. So again, uh, there's nothing wrong with this. Again, continue to participate as we've talked about. But Overall, you know, this isn't, you know, an opportunity that's going to be this way. And again, this is kind of how investors begin to think is like, oh, this is the can't stop, won't stop market. It's just going to continue to do this forever. And that's just not the case of how that's going to work. So again, you know, with these deviations we've talked about before from the 200 day moving averages, from other moving averages, deviations of outside normality, those are going to correct at some point. The question is only what causes that correction to occur and when will it occur? And again, that's just, those are the things we don't know, but that's why we have to be aware of, of what's happening currently. And again, we, we see this repeatedly throughout history. And when we're in the midst of these type of advances, we tend to forget about history a bit, but we've seen these type of actions before. They always end in a correction. You're going to get a pullback at some point, but the only function is a question of time. I know we talk about this, have been talking about this a lot lately, but this is really just the, the drive in the market, that overall psychology. So that's what you need to know before the bell this morning. When we come back, we're gonna pick up with Danny Ratliff. Wall Street wants to save your retirement. We'll talk about how they're gonna do that for you right after the break. <coughs> Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube page has all of our videos ready for your easy access. From three minutes on markets and money to each day's radio shows like Technically Speaking Tuesday, Financial Fitness Friday, and the latest analysis from Lance Roberts and Michael Leibowitz. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel for The Real Investment Show. Or just click on the show links at realinvestmentadvice.com. 
When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax friendly retirement paycheck, perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance? Guaranteed income solutions, all along with comprehensive planning. At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today, 855 RIA Plan, or find us online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. Small businesses are discovering that attracting and retaining top talent come down to more than just salary. In today's highly competitive job market, compensation is more than just wages. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Healthcare and retirement plans can make the difference in hiring and retaining the best employees. We can show you how to build an affordable, effective employment package that delivers true value for your workers and your business. Call me toll free at 855-RIA plan or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Bulls win in bull markets. Bears win in bear markets. Eagles soar above and take advantage of opportunity. Let us help you soar as you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. And welcome back to the show this morning. Uh, Danny Ratliff joining me, as always. And, uh, you know, it's interesting. I was talking about yesterday. So on Friday, I wrote this article about retirement, the kind of this retirement crisis. And because there's so many people retiring that were not expected to retire. And over the last few years, there's a big uptick in retirement. And then, of course, yesterday we we're talking about on the show that Larry Fink was talking about how, you know, retiring at 65 is stupid because, you know, we're all living longer. So we all need to work longer. And of course, you know, half their money is in retirement funds. Right. So what they the last thing they want is people drawing a whole lot of money out of the retirement funds because that that impacts Larry Fink's paycheck. So, you know, <laughs> so now Wall Street wants to come and, and, and say, but this is just, you know, kind of the consequence of, you know, things are things are look, people are starting to wake up to the fact that there's an inequality that's going on. And this is really kind of a subject I'm touching on on Friday's article is about wealth inequality, what's happening. And, you know, a lot of this has to do with inflation. I mean, you know, infl Danny, you know, inflation's getting bad. You know, you remember back in the day when strippers used to have names like Crystal and Diamond after something really expensive? No. But, yeah. Well, now you go to the men's club, it's like, welcome to the stage, gas and eggs. <laughs> so, I mean, you just know stuff's getting bad, man. <laughs> inflation. <laughs> Where'd you get this from, Lance? Is this? I'm just. I was thinking about it last Christine, night. I swear I you've not been in, going to these establishments. I mean, you're not shining a very good light on yourself I'm here, Lance. Saying, How do we know I'm these things? I'm just saying, you know. Lance is redder than you are. I'm just. I'm just saying. I was. Thinking, I was. No, I was thinking about this last night. I was like, you know, what goes with, you know, what goes on with, you know, the inflation. That's sure. So that's why. Yeah, no, that is, anyway. that is a good point. There was actually a, what we see some reports a couple years ago during COVID that said, you know, how the strippers knew that there was an economic problem because yeah. nobody was going in there. Right. Yeah. And, and because it's an all cash business. Yeah. But, but, you know, the point is, is that now, you know, people are starting to figure out that there's this big gap between, you know, what happens in the real world um, with people trying to make ends meet. And again, we, we see lots of reports about this. And uh, again, you know, you take a look at political polls um, right now, look, th look, the stock market's doing great. The economy's doing fine your presidential approval rating should not be in the tank, right? It shouldn't be running at below, you know, in the 30s, right? That's just, that doesn't jive with what's going on in, with a booming stock market and, and supposedly a very strong economy. But the problem is, is that for the vast majority of people that they poll, they're not making ends meet, right? There's just not enough capital to put food on the table and to, to feed their families and do the things that they need to do. So there's this, there's this big dichotomy that's going on between what you see and what's actually happening uh, with the rest of the world, and and this is and this is something that's going to play out in the election coming up in November, but this is also something that's going to play out in the economy as we go forward. Again, it, it's a, it's a very and, and again I can't quite figure this out, but you know this market's acting like 
and again, you go back to 2020 as an example. So when we shut down the economy in 2020, you know, we flooded the economy with $5 trillion worth of, you know, stimulus checks to households. The Fed was doing $120 billion a month in QE. We had zero interest rates and the stock market took off. And we spent all of 2020 and all of 2021 in a very low volatility advance because of all that liquidity. It had to go somewhere. And, and this is where, you know, people were chasing meme stocks and SPACs and, you know, they were getting on Robinhood and, and day trading stocks on Robinhood and buying options and all this other stuff. Well, we have that same exact sentiment going on right now within the markets, but we have five and a half percent interest rates. You have, you know, Q, QT going on. The Fed is actually contracting their balance sheet, not expanding it. There's not checks going to households. And it's interesting because the market's acting like we have this massive flood of liquidity. And we do. I mean, this, this there's money coming in from literally everywhere and we're seeing it chase everything, right? There's a massive uptick in options uh, by retail investors. We're seeing them, you know, chase bitcoins and meme stocks are back. You know, uh, you know, we're seeing massive moves in these meme stocks. And so again, the markets are acting like we have all this monetary accommodation going on when we don't. So it's just a very interesting phenomenon of what's happening in the markets right now, where all this money's coming from. Well, you know, you touched on wealth inequality, and I think this is all these policies have actually made that worse. I mean, you talk about inflation. Well, if you don't have a whole lot of money, you're living paycheck to paycheck. Inflation doesn't really help you if you don't have assets that are going to appreciate. Mm -hmm. Whereas the wealthy, you see that gap continue to, to grow because they're invested in stocks. They own companies. They own assets that are appreciating for the most part. So I think that's where a lot of people's frustration stems from. And I, you know, we talk about this regularly. It's almost like we have a, that tale of two economies mm -hmm. where it's two separate worlds. I mean, you have a world that's just trying to make ends meet and you have another one that's continuing to do well and they don't seem to mind this inflation, right? Because this isn't impacting them, their day-to-day -day lifestyle so much as it is the average Joe. And so that middle class though has been just eroded. And you, know, you think about if you didn't buy a house during COVID, can you afford one now? I mean, are we? Did we just lock a ton of people into being renters forever? No, I don't know that. But it, I, you, you say that, right? But so you know, we bought this house. Yeah. Uh, so we sold our house in July. Just quick, quick backstory. If you don't know the story, we sold our house in July two years ago, and then about a year ago, we bought a house in this neighborhood. And it's just interesting to watch what's going on because, you know, houses are coming up for sale. And these are these houses are you know just I'm just watching houses kind of all around Houston. So th this is you know south of I-10 and west of Beltway 8 if you know Houston, but it's kind of in just that area of Houston proper in in Houston proper, right? So this isn't Katy, this isn't the Woodlands where Danny lives up in Richville. Um, I don't live in the Woodlands, Lance. <laughs> God, so, I mean. <laughs> but, you know, this is just kind of normal Houston. But these houses are, you know, a house comes up on the market at one point three million and it's sold within 24 hours. Yeah. I mean, they are not sitting on the market. And these houses are also being sold for cash. But for there's the not part. there's not a ton of inventory. Right. And so the yeah. problem is that one point three million. You have somebody who probably owns other assets, has something that they were able to sell and they're able to still move into something like that. Right. What we're talking about is what about the first time homeowners? What about the guys that are the blue collar workers that are working, you know, just to to pay their bills each yeah. and every month? And they're hoping to put something in savings each month. I know. That's, that's who's really being impacted. Exactly. And so it's the $200,000 well, houses. It's the three hundred. You know, you, you look at these homes, and I, I may have shared this a week or two ago. My, my in-laws were moving here, and they're like, wanted me to go look at the house. And they're like, well, what do you think? And I was like, well, I think it looks like a two or three hundred thousand dollar house mm -hmm. when in reality right now it's a six or seven hundred thousand dollar house that's and that's the which point. is crazy it, that's the point is that these houses are not you know when you say when you say oh there's a house that's you know 1.3 million or whatever you go wow that must be like this huge house yeah no this is a house built in the 60s <laughs> you know that is maybe 3,300 square feet, you know, max. And, and 10 no years pool. ago, they'd have torn it down to build something new. Correct. But now it's so much like, oh, right. I don't know if we want to do no, that. No, yeah. The, and I'm just saying is that, that, you know, we never saw that, you know, we had interest rates go up. We had this massive spike in inflation. We never saw housing prices go down. Yeah. You know, everybody was thinking we're going to do this massive housing crash. And, and again, we just see these houses, they come on the market and then they're sold within a day or two and they're all cash sales and, you know, 
you know, that's, but what that, but that's my point is it just seems like that there's just this money, just these money pots sitting around everywhere that everybody's dipping into and throwing into the financial markets. And then you look at all the, you look at all these surveys and polls and it's like, people like, I can't make ends meet. I can't afford gas and eggs. And, you know, yeah. it's, it's such a, it's such a bifurcated economy, right? That's, and, and especially when it comes to the markets, it's such a bifurcated market. No, it really is. And I think that's where people's frustration comes from because they see this, they see what's going on on one half of the, the world and then the other half is like, just well, can't, can't get there, right? Well, I, I think you say it's not one half, it's 10% that own the stock market and then there the other go. 90% that don't. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe that's the real story. But, you know, I, but this all kind of, del- you know, kind of dovetails back into this conversation we're having yesterday a bit um, about retirement plans and, and people retiring. And again, this kind of retirement crisis that's coming up because again, as I, as I noted in our article on Friday, you take a look at it. So the four, you know, Fidelity just had their annual 401k report about how many 401k millionaires they have. And there was like 422,000, I believe was the number, uh, which was almost back to a record from where it was back in 2021 when the markets were taking off to the moon with all the stimulus. Wait, 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 say that one more time. The, so it's almost back to a record, record of millionaires. Yeah, we're almost back to the same number of, of millionaires we had in 2021. So what does that mean? People are still underwater. <laughs> well, yeah, but that's the funny thing is that nobody ever puts that, you know, contextually, you don't right. you don't think about it that way. I mean, everybody thinks, oh, record markets are at all-time highs, but yet Fidelity is saying that we're just now getting close to back to record number of millionaires. Right. So that means that people lost a lot of money. Right. And they're just trying to recoup that, even though markets are at all-time highs. And that's the interesting interesting thing about how markets work. And I think we we high water mark everything right. that we do. So you talk about planning and retirement, you know, we discount that aspect of things. And now think about the person that took that type of loss and is taking distributions. It's 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 a terrible impact as far as how, what it has. It is. And by the way, those millionaires only make up one point six percent of the total amount of four one K plans they manage. So again, it's just you know not surprising that's, yeah, that's the way not wealth breakdowns. Uh, but but you know the, the the point is is that you know you know Larry Fink is now saying that you know they, he's got an idea right he's going to save your retirement. Merrill Lynch is also now coming out with a way to save your retirement, and we're going to talk about those when we come back here from the break in a second because I think it's just an interesting twist. They need to hold on to your money for longer, and they're now coming up with a really interesting way to make sure they can hold on to your money. Forever. <laughs> so we'll, we'll get into that. All right. Uh, be sure and get by the website as well uh, while you're there. Send us your questions and comments. Danny's always happy to answer all of your questions every day. So send him a bunch. Um, but our latest blog post out, Daily Market Commentary, is out this morning already. And make sure you subscribe to that. We put that out every morning. Uh, it's absolutely free. And kind of gives you a pre-market uh, kind of look uh, to get ready to go before the market goes. It comes out at 7.30 in the morning sharp so you'll have it in your email box at 7 30 and then you'll be ready for the uh the investment day all right quick break come back we'll pick up on merrill lynch and larry fink and what they have in common about your retirement plans don't go away The Real Investment Advice blog. It's required reading for the informed investor. Catch it today at realinvestmentadvice.com. Oh, Red, I declare. I plum missed that candy coffee. Whatever am I going to do? Don't you worry, little darling. We'll watch it again on our YouTube channel. Why, Red? I never. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all of our past presentations from Candid Coffee and Lunch and Learn to special topic discussions and all of our live show recordings preserved for you. Subscribe now to the Real Investment Show YouTube channel or look for the link on our website at realinvestmentadvice.com. Hi, Lance Roberts here. If you're like most people, your 401k plan represents the bulk of your retirement assets. And unfortunately for many, managing your 401k plan can be difficult. There's so many choices. 
so many things to consider. With just a quick email, a couple of questions, you can put RIA Advisors to work for you managing your 401k plan. Just simply click Ask a Question at realinvestmentadvice.com or give us a call at 855-RIA-PLAN. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. Manage risk and volatility rather than trying to manage gains. You don't have to be right all the time. Long-term investing success is a 70% gain. Let us help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors. 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. Can't catch the whole show now? Listen to our podcast later at realinvestmentadvice.com. Food in total is now making up 30% of the average discretionary income. I believe it. I mean, that yeah. is our largest expenses food. Yeah. And, and we rarely eat out. The Real Investment Show podcast. Our biggest frustration at home is how, how do we do this cheaper? Yeah. Uh, no, I agree. I agree. We're, we're running hunger games at our house. At realinvestmentadvice.com. <laughs> so, you know, if you can make it to the table without getting killed, you get to eat. When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven-layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax-friendly retirement paycheck, perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance, guaranteed income solutions, all along with comprehensive planning. At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today, 855-RIA-PLAN, or find us online at realinvestmentadvice.com, realinvestmentadvice.com. Health and financial security touches everyone within your organization. Offering benefits for all doesn't need to be complicated. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, Senior Benefits Consultant at RIA Advisors. RIA Benefits provides independent expertise to find solutions that speak to the mission of your business, the culture you want to establish, and the budget you are able to work within. Book a free consultation with me at realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, and we'll find a solution that takes care of your most important asset, your people. realinvestmentadvice.com slash retirement, realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Investment Show YouTube channel has all our videos ready for your easy access. Like Technically Speaking Tuesday, Financial Fitness Friday, plus each day's radio shows. Subscribe and bookmark our YouTube channel at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. So what's important for companies like Merrill Lynch or BlackRock is to make sure they hold on to your money for a very long time and, of course, charge you a fee for it. And, uh, of course, you know, we've talked about Larry Fink's endeavors into ESG and how he was charging you four times as much for an S&P fund and just calling it, S you know, calling it ESG. Of course, uh, that didn't work out very well for, for Larry. So, you know, that's those things are fading pretty quickly. So he's got to find a new avenue to keep making money off of you. And now every, the focus is now turning to 401k plans. 401ks have been an unmitigated disaster um, ever since they were implemented. And, you know, it was it was supposedly initially again it was a it was an option to add on to a pension plan because back prior to, to 401k plans we had pensions corporate pensions and you know this is where the companies would fund your pension plan you'd work for the company for 30 years and it was great and then these 401k plans came along and companies said wait a minute you mean i don't have to fund a pension plan anymore i can just you know shove all this off onto the employee and they can fund their own retirement this is great for my profitability and so uh, since really since about the early 80s, when 401ks kind of first came around, they've gained a lot of prominence because, again, this is a great way to shift all the liability from the company off to the employee. And, of course, we haven't seen the benefit of that. Uh, you know, when people had pensions, they could retire. They had a fully funded pension. They did well in retirement. They were taken care of, had their Social Security go along with it. They were fine. Now, we see a lot of retirees with less than a year's worth of salary saved up. The average 401k balance is, runs around $100,000, and that's not nearly enough to fund retirement, even with Social Security. And so we're seeing people having to opt to live longer and work harder. And then, of course, the, the sheer fact that about only 50% of businesses have 401k plans, that leaves a lot of employees that just don't have access to retirement plans at all. And then, of course, because of the cost of living, 
only about half of those people that do have plans actually contribute to one. So the, the problem has just been magnified. And now we're facing this retirement crisis where more and more people are needing to retire, wanting to retire, having to retire, whatever the reasons are. And of course, as we start increasing productivity more through artificial intelligence, there'll be a lot more people that are kind of pushed into retirement because you just won't be needed anymore because artificial intelligence will do your job for you. So again, now, BlackRock and Merrill Lynch stepping up. They have a couple of good ideas about how to solve that retirement problem by creating an income stream for you in retirement and also holding on to your money during the during the, the longer term time frame. Let's talk about Merrill Lynch real quick. Uh, start there and we'll, then we'll go to BlackRock's. Uh, they have a new uh, income focused uh, portfolio uh, that they want to be offering out. And, and again, remember, we had all these target date funds also. This was the original kind of invention for this. We're going to have these target date funds. You invest in this target date fund, and when you hit retirement, you'll be fully funded for retirement. It's going to reduce risk over time, and it's all going to be good, except that didn't really work very well at all. Um, but And so now they're trying to figure out the new what's the new scheme, right, for retirement in these yeah. 401k plans. Yeah, so while you were out, we actually talked a bit about target date funds. So there are your qualified deferred uh, investment option. And so essentially what that means is that that's a way that protects the plan administrator, the trustees of the plans. And so that's why we see them in most, because if we don't choose something, if it's not going to cash, it's going to go in that target date fund that says, okay, Lance, you're going to retire when you're 110. Here is what your target date fund is. Danny, here's yours, you know, so on and so forth. So, yeah, Danny's is like 2030. Mine's like 2090. I don't get it, but there you go. Well, you know, <laughs> so, uh, but that that's the idea behind it. And so what they're trying to do is create some new target date funds. And, you know, this has been in the works for some time in the sense that, you know, trying to find a, a better way to distribute and create income for retirees. The problem, though, Lance, is what you mentioned earlier, is that, you know, you have half of the economy or half of people work for small businesses in this country. And yet the numbers even worse than what you think. It's only a quarter of them offer these plans. Right. And and now we have all the, the new rules that allow liquid leakage, uh, meaning that just other ways that we can take funds out of this instead of having it for savings. We're going to see emergency savings plans put within 401ks. Uh, we're finding more and more ways to take funds out. So this is problematic. So what they're trying to do, though, is annuitize this in many ways. Now, right. Merrill Lynch is a little bit different than what BlackRock is mentioning, but I would... I would think that's going to change. Right. You know, I think that we're going to see a lot of bigger changes within the landscape of these 401k plans. As, you know, funny enough, they're trying to turn us into a defined benefit plan in many ways, but the employer is not footing the bill. So the biggest difference, so Lance mentioned the pension and how 401ks have really ruined a lot of retirement savings is that in a pension, a defined benefit plan is a technical word for it. We would see that the employer's on the hook for funding the retirement, mm -hmm. whereas the defined contribution plan, the 401k retirement savings plans, those are different. The onus is on us. It's the employee who has to actually fund that, put the funds in. You may get a match if you're lucky, if you're a safe harbor plan, but and, and a lot of places are offering some type of match. But the majority of what's going in there is what you're going to put in. And most people don't even get the full benefit of what they're putting in from a match perspective. Most right. people don't understand the match. They they put funds into it incorrectly or they don't take advantage of it fully. Right. And so that's another issue with this. So Merrill Lynch now is coming out with a guiding guided investing is what they're calling it. an online investment advisory program that combines online investing with a professionally managed portfolio. I'm not sure what's real different about what they're doing now and <laughs> because in this. I was gonna say because they have that now. And they call it professionally managed. It's buy and hold, right? Yeah. But it's just, you know, it's like, oh, we have a manager here that buys and holds stocks for you in this index. But Well, and so this income-focused strategy choice, says investors can choose strategies ranging from stable income to income and growth to best align with their time horizon, risk tolerance, and more. It's just confusing in the aspect that that's what most places do now. Right. So, you know, this is kind of, you know, we, we just changed and put a new wrapper around it. Um, you know, as far as what we're calling it, what we're doing, but I don't notice anything substantially different with different with this, other than maybe this is an online platform and maybe you talk to an advisor. Yeah. I'm not real sure how that works. Right. But um, you know, there's some unknowns here, obviously. But I thought this was interesting because this article came out, and then you saw Larry Fink come out in his annual shareholder report or letter, saying, "Hey, 
we are changing the landscape of retirement. And Larry Fink's is much more, you know, he calls this revolutionary. Right. And and it's, we're beginning to see it's this. not. Well, it's it's <laughs> it's not. That's not revolutionary. No, but but we have seen so a couple of years ago we did see with new passages of uh, new legislation that, you know, they're allowing annuities inside of 401k's. The issue has been is that most 401k's haven't figured out the logistics of it. Right. You know, how to administer it, how it's going to physically work. You know, a lot of annuities for the most part, you know, you're putting in a lump sum, they're single premium. You do have some that will allow you to put in, you know, a little bit each month, but the issue with that is that historically you are changing your surrender period for each contribution, which can be difficult for many to keep up with. Right. And so this is going to be interesting as far as how this is going to roll out. So Larry Fink says that, and, and give you perspective, BlackRock manages $10 trillion. Half of that is in 401ks or retirement plans. Mm -hmm. So this is a really big boon for them if this is what he thinks this is. It's also, but the retirement crisis is, which is what he's talking about, is also a really big threat to him because- Correct. Five trillion of his ten is in retirement assets that are going to get drawn down. Correct. Right. So that's exactly right. So now you start thinking about you have ten thousand people turning sixty five every day. If people are starting to live on these funds, that's why he doesn't want people to retire. Right. And that's why they, they've well, always and told again, you. And then, and that's what I was saying in, in the article we did on Friday. It's you know we say there's ten thousand. And right, the actuarial was at this age we're going to have ten thousand mm -hmm. people retiring every day. Problem is it's not ten thousand. It's like thirty thousand a day are retiring because most people aren't retiring at sixty five. They're retiring actually earlier. earlier. And, and that's know, and that's a problem because now they're draw, they're not contributing to those assets and now they're drawing on those assets, which is a threat to Mr. Fink. Correct. And, and then if salary. you look at demographics and actually just studies, people say, well, if you look at the life expectancy, it's coming down. Well, but once you reach sixty five, the odds of you making eighty go way up. Right. The odds of you making eighty five, you know, we start God, to see these not. things. Yeah. I, I really hope not. I mean, you're going to be working at 85. I don't know why you think that you, you've got this great deal. Um, I mean, you do. You get to work with me. And you get to come here every day. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. So Larry Fink says, as I write this, 14 retirement plan sponsors are planning to, to make LifePath Paycheck available to 500,000 employees. I believe it'll one day be the most used investment strategy in defined contribution plans. We're talking about a revolution in retirement. And let's talk about why this is great for Larry Fink, because... ETFs, which are what are now mostly, you know, mutual funds and ETFs are mostly in 401ks now, right? Correct. And the fee basis on those are being suppressed dramatically. You know, everybody's having to charge a lower and lower fee to get you to buy their ETF. And so they're very, you know, investors are very fee conscious now about what they pay. Well, the great thing about annuities is you can bury a whole lot of profitability inside of an annuity. Yeah. Well, and this is, this is supposedly the new generation of target date products. Yeah. So this will provide an option that uh, to purchase a lifetime income stream for retirement from insurers selected by BlackRock. Yeah. So, which I'm sure that uh, there's a kickback. There, there there's won't be. Well, I'm, I, I will bet you dollars to donuts that BlackRock acquires an insurer before too very long, if they haven't already. If they haven't already. Well, the way that BlackRock can acquire an insurer is just purchase their shares right on the open yeah. market. They don't I mean they disclose it. It doesn't look like on paper like they physically went out and bought somebody. Like they have physically acquired a business, but they've they're controlling or, a big Or they'll just start an insurer inside of BlackRock. It would be BlackRock Insurance Company. Yeah. So with 10 trillion, you can certainly fund your own business. So, But again, there's once you start that annuity business, this is why annuities are so lucrative because annuities have higher fees in many cases, particularly higher than an ETF. And it's an annuity stream that just keeps paying until you die. <laughs> yeah, and I don't... And, 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 don't take this the wrong way. This is nothing, you know, like we're not talking bad about annuities. No, sake. no, not at all. This is, just, this they can be a great tool Larry, for some people. Larry's figuring out a way yeah. to capitalize on the retirement. That's what he does, right? Well, he makes money. For profit business. And, and I want to talk Absolutely. about on the other side of this break a couple of things that I think are really good about this, too, though. There you go. Still going to retire. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. You can retire anywhere you want, Lance. I'm just telling you. It'll be. Gas as long as you take your me. desk with you. <laughs> Be right back. Get daily investment news you can use. Delivered at the speed of the internet at realinvestmentadvice.com. In 1999, a parafiduciary group of financial advisors were busted by corporate giants for trying to operate in their clients' best interest. 
Wiseman promptly escaped from a high cost margin environment to the Houston Energy Corridor. Today, still excoriated by their former employers, they survive as protectors of others' fortunes. If you have a problem about preserving capital, if no one else can help, and you can find them right here, maybe you should hire the RIA team. Small businesses are now being challenged by the lack of employees and how to attract and recruit the best employees. To get the better employee, you'll have to offer a better package. Hi, I'm Tom Allen, RIA Advisors Retirement Plan Consultant. Don't assume a 401k plan is too costly or complicated for your small business to offer. Let us show you how to make the most of an affordable and effective plan that will deliver true value for your business and your employees. Call me toll free at 855-RIA-PLAN or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. That's realinvestmentadvice.com. The Real Invest. Show. When it comes to wealth management, most people think of stocks and bonds, but it's like enjoying one layer in a seven layer cake. At RIA Advisors, we want to make sure you get your cake and eat it too. Social Security, Medicare, creating a tax friendly retirement paycheck, perhaps you're saving for college. How about life insurance, guaranteed income solutions, all along with comprehensive planning? At RIA, a holistic approach to your money is our priority. Call us today, 855 RIA Plan, or find us online at Real Investment Advice. Com, realinvestmentadvice.com. And now, another page from the Real Investment Advisors Investing Manifesto. A passive investment portfolio requires active risk management. It's not a choice, it's necessity. Diversification doesn't protect against risk of loss. Let us actively help you reach your financial goals with RIA Advisors. Neither bull nor bear. RIA Advisors, 281-501-1791 or online at realinvestmentadvice.com. You're listening to The Real Investment Show. And welcome back to the show this morning. Look, I am not against annuities at all. Just I want to be really clear. I own an annuity. Uh, you should too, probably. Uh, three reasons to own an annuity. I mean, if you need, if you think you might want or are interested in an annuity, there's three reasons to do it. One is, is you're in a business that has a lot of lawsuit liability to it. Annuities are, are judgment proof. So you stick some, some money into a annuity. Um, good example of this was Ken Lay. He put a whole lot of his money into annuities just before Enron went belly up. So when Enron went crazy and, and, and got brought down, those assets were protected for his family. Another thing is you need a guaranteed income stream for life. In other words, you know, when you retire, you're on Social Security and you need a another $2,000 a month to make ends meet every month. Annuities are fantastic for that. You put enough money into it, every month you're going to get a paycheck, make sure those bills are covered. So you don't have to worry about it in retirement. And so, or, you know, annuities are great if you make a whole bunch of money and you really just don't have the ability to invest and, in, you know, you're just kind of capped out of your 401k plan, doing your 401k contributions just really aren't that much uh, to your overall income. Annuities are a great place to, to shove off some assets that will grow tax deferred to, to retirement. So there's certainly some very, very good reasons they should be part of your consideration um, in your retirement planning. So don't think just because I'm bashing on Larry Fink about annuitizing your 401k plan that I'm against annuities. I'm not at all. I'm very pro them. I'm just anti Larry Fink. Let's just be clear. <laughs> so I think the man just is evil and he does a lot of things that aren't great for the economy, but they're very good for him personally. And uh, so that's, that's my beef with Larry Fink. So go ahead. No, that's, 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 that's good. Um, so, well, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the comments. So if you uh, want to go have some fun, go to YouTube, The Real Investment Show. Go subscribe and like. Um, but always a lot of good discussion in the chat room here. And so, you know, Rob mentioned that the 401k was never intended to be a supplement to retirement. Right. Retirement plans in general. And, and in fact, it was. Ted Banna was the one who created yeah. this. And he didn't, what he he didn't was mean doing, for it to replace pensions. It was a loophole. Yeah. That he was essentially doing to, to help people put more funds aside. And it wasn't supposed to be something that would grow to be as big as it did. And obviously replace these defined benefit plans, which obviously we, we know that we even, know the history. He, he, here. Even Ted Banna is not happy with the way yeah. it turned out. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's been interviewed and said, this was not what I intended at all. And this is not good. Correct. And, and so, you know, I said we'd talk a little bit about some of the good from this. And I, and I do think there can be some good. And Lance, you're exactly right. You know, BlackRock's thinking, and they are a for-profit business. I understand exactly yeah. what they're doing. I do think there is benefit to some people in this um, because I think that there are people that cannot 
get out of their own way. Well, look, if, if you, you know, this, and you hit, you, you, you really hit the nail on the head earlier, which is when we set up 401k plans. Hey, it, Brent, record that. And I want to. Yeah, just the one time I said one he's time. right. Yeah, hang on. Let's keep going. So, I got the timestamp. Yeah, great. The, thank you. But no, I mean, look, when 401k plans set up, they were a good idea. But this is just like the whole problem with Social Security we were talking about previously, is that Social Security was a good idea when it was set up, right? You retire, there's this money you've paid into, it's there for your retirement. And then we say, oh, there's this pot of money. Let's figure out a way to give it to more people. So we start giving it to widows and orphans and firefighters and you name it. And all of a sudden, you got too many people taking out Social Security, not enough people paying in. Well, same thing with 401k plans. It was a good idea. And then we go, well, hey, look, we can let people take loans against their 401k plan, Right. And then we start writing articles about, oh, you're borrowing from yourself. <laughs> you know, Whoa. all kinds of fallacies. You should never borrow from your 401k plan. But then we start saying, well, you got a hardship. Okay, you can take money out of your 401k. No, that's the whole point, right? You put money into an annuity, you can't take that money out <laughs> unless you pay really significant penalties to do that. But the point is you're supposed to put this money in and leave it alone. And we keep giving people all this ability to get access to it. And that's not the that's not what the, the purpose was for retirement. You're supposed to put money into it. It's a lockbox. You can't get to it until you retire. And yeah. that's where we really messed up. And so now we have all these people that did pay in. They did well. And then we got into a financial hardship during the financial crisis. They tapped their 401k plan at the worst possible time because asset prices were, were declining and just destroyed their 401k plans. And that's why, you know, we've we've had two major bull markets and the average 401k balance is 100 grand. If you just put the money in, and left it alone, it'd be worth, the average balance would be hundreds of thousands, not a hundred thousand. Well, but, but you have that leakage. You also have people yeah. that make knee-jerk reactions. I think they make it difficult. And, you know, you can do so many things. I mean, you're just touching on a handful of mm -hmm. things that are problems. I mean, now your, your matching contributions with some employers can go to actually pay off student loan debt. And I'm not necessarily against, but we're, we're to save. It. We're to save, right? <laughs> that the fundamentals of all of this have been thrown out the window and essentially we're trying to cram everything into one, you know, we got a square peg here yeah. into a circle and, and that's a problem. Or well, and a lot of this has come along with people wanting to get votes, right? It's like yeah. here, you can use this to pay off your student loan debt. That's not what it's for. Well, but it gives you the, it gives everybody the perception that we're doing something that's exactly. positive. We're doing something. And, and what would be positive is if we took a step back and said, what's going on with our education system? How do we need to do a better job of, teaching kids about money, about budgeting, planning, about what are the steps in the hierarchy of how you save, things you do. And that's something that's just been thrown out. I mean, it, it's unfortunate. We need to find a much better way to educate the population as far as things you should do. And the communication, Richard and I talk about this all the time, communication amongst families, generations, mm -hmm. you need to have that. And it's unfortunate that it's not there and it seems to be something that is frowned upon. So oh, well, we don't want to talk about this. Or if you make a mistake with money, I think that's probably one of the most valuable things you can share with somebody, especially a loved one. Hey, I know you may be embarrassed about it, but here's what I did. Here's here's yeah. one of the biggest mistakes I've made and I wish I did differently. Think about the knowledge that you could impart on somebody that they don't have to go make that same mistake, hopefully, and you put them up in a better spot. But these these annuities in some ways can help protect a lot of people. I, I we have a, We work with all different types of folks, and we have some people that will tell you, I am not good with money. I have a difficult time with spending. And I'm not talking about people who don't have money. I'm talking about people who have a lot of money too. Yep. And this can help with some of that. Having that defined paycheck. Number one, you know, if you're doing a plan and looking at this properly, you can back in and say, okay, I have social security. I know there's a, there's a lot of talk going on on the, the YouTube chat as well about social security right now. We're not even going to go into that at the moment. We don't have enough time, but Okay, you have Social Security. Maybe you are a dinosaur and have a defined benefit plan, right? right? So let's start talking about all the income sources you have and then what your expenses look like. Well, maybe this 401k or a portion of this, you don't put everything, but you give yourself some flexibility and you use this annuitization aspect or whatever they're going to call it for a portion of your funds to help meet your expenses. So now everything else on top is icing on the cake. But now you've got all the, the stuff done that has to be done, and it eliminates a lot of stress on the markets and reliant mm -hmm. specifically on that. You know, there's, there's all these talks, and we talk about it frequently as well, is that the old school 4% rule, well, did it change? You know, actually studies show that it went down to two. 
Now we saw yields go back up last year, and people are like, oh, we can do four or five again. Yields are going to go back down in another year. We'll be talking all again, over again about why it's 2% or 3% or what it should be. And so that will be variable. This may not. And so, you know, one of my fears, though, too, though, Lance, is that based on, you know, we look at all the actuaries and the pensions on how much trouble the pensions got in. Do these annuity companies get in trouble with this, though? Or the, not necessarily the annuity companies, maybe the 401k plans, because they went out and they interviewed 14 companies that are going to allow this, that they're going to use within their plan. Mm-hmm. But are they going to go out and say, well, I'm, maybe they, they, their due diligence changes a little bit. Right. It's like, oh, I want to get with the one that's going to give me the highest. Because we see a lot of people do that. But what happens when we're going to get the highest yield? We're going to take on and a lot more, more risk. risk. That's right. No, and then again, you know, the, and these all sound great, fine and dandy. And, you know, these, and these things always come around, by the way, during bull markets. And then the bear market comes along and we find out all the flaws that exist in these plans as well. And, and we've seen this every time. We went through the financial crisis in 2008. That's what really revealed the whole target, the problem with target date funds. Target date funds were touted, you know, pre-2008. They were going to be the greatest thing since sliced oh, man, bread. Yeah. And, you know, everybody was like promoting, oh, the target date funds, target date funds, just buy the target date fund, you're great. And then in 2008, the wheels came off the cart. And it was revealed, you know, the, the problems with these target date funds is they don't shift allocations like they're supposed to. You know, you look at a 20, you look at a 2010 target date fund today, it's supposed to be all bonds. It's like 80 percent equity. So, you know, that's the problem. And, and I'm sure we're going to find out during. And again, these things all come out. They all sound great during a bull market. And then when you get into the bear market, when it comes, you know, that's when the, 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 the you know, the kind of the. The wolf in sheep's clothing is discovered, and we find out how these things aren't as good as they're cracked up to be. So, you know, it's just, and again, you know, the other problem is just simply is that during, you know, financial downturns is when people need access to funds. And given that 80% of Americans don't have $500 in the bank, where's the first thing they go to when they get in trouble? And they have to start trying to tap that 401k plan, whatever it is, and they'll pay any price to get access to those funds. I mean, you know, 10% penalty and, uh, income taxes, pay 60% of what you're drawing out. Don't care. I need the money, right? That's, that's you know, that that part of it isn't going to, unless we change the rules to where you can't tap that 401k plan, that's still going to be the problem during the next downturn. Yeah, I mean, we have a behavioral issue, I think, here with this with this in general. I mean, we need to start thinking about outside the box, not just use the 401k plan. You need to start thinking about, all right, where's your emergency funds? Where are your additional funds? How are you putting funds aside? And especially knowing that, you know, taxes are likely going to go up. The government continues to spend money. Where can we start to think about how we diversify assets, not just amongst the investments that we have, but amongst where we hold them, what we're doing with them. And I think that is going to be crucial in the future and something that we can't overlook because that's going to be a big you know, people that do that, I think are going to have a significant leg up on somebody who only invests in the 401k. Yeah, I don't disagree. All right, wraps up the show for the day. And be sure by the website, send us your questions, comments, emails. Always happy to have those from you. And uh, our latest blog post is out. Uh, Michael's article is out today on liquidity, talking about fiscal liquidity versus financial liquidity. That's on the website now. And then on Friday, we'll have the article on wealth inequality. So all that coming up this week on the website, realinvestmentadvice.com. Make sure to like and subscribe to this channel. We appreciate you, and we'll see you back here tomorrow.